in the last lecture, uh, we had started looking at the I V characteristic of an ideal P n junction and uh, we stopped at a point uh, in deciding on what happens in the forward bias n junction. So, uh, if you recall what we have done so far is that uh, if this is the metallurgical junction at x is equal to 0 um, and we have a depletion width in a depletion approximation. This is the limit uh, for uh, in the n side and p side. So, this is the n type side and this is the p type side and here we have the edge of the depletion width. <coughs> this should, uh, let me assume a equally doped semiconductor on both sides. So, it is kind of in the center although it does not matter we have not really put in any values here. Now, for this uh, for this p n junction we had uh, shown that when we have it in a forward bias the electrons which are getting uh, injected into the p side uh, they would be giving rise to an excess electron carrier concentration delta n p here and this we had calculated that delta n p at the point at the edge of the depletion width at minus x p is given by n p o exponential q v applied k t minus 1. Uh, similarly, we had shown that uh, holes which are going to be injected into the n side uh, will be given by delta p n and we had taken an uh, obtain an expression for that at the value x n which is edge of the depletion width here and that will be given by p and o exponential q v v a v a k t minus 1. Now, um, this uh, this basically has now then uh, given us that the electrons which are injected as minority carrier on the p side and holes which are injected as minority carrier on the n side are giving rise to this uh, concentration at the band edge. And we know very very far from the uh, from the band edge this concentration has to come down to the equilibrium value which would be the p value at in the on the n side in equilibrium and on this side it will be the n value on the p side in equilibrium. So, the injected electrons in the p side at the edge it is this concentration far from the edge at point minus infinity it has to come down here. So, I am drawing some line here and we have to still figure out what this expression is going to be. So, the, elec the electron concentration from the edge of the depletion width has to reduce to the equilibrium electron concentration on the p side. Similarly, on the uh, n side the whole concentration from the edge has to somehow reduce to the equilibrium concentration on the n side. And this is what we need to solve what this concentration profile is going to be. We know the boundary condition, boundary condition at x n this is the excess carrier concentration at plus infinity it is going to come down to p n o and in this on this side boundary condition is delta n p at the edge and at negative infinity it will reduce to n p 0. So, with this boundary condition it is a problem of a uh, uh, continuity problem of a minority carriers. So, let us uh, let me solve it for the p region first for the n region first for the n region this is a problem of uh, minority carrier diffusion of holes and uh, we will uh, we are look, we are interested in a solution when I have applied a voltage. So, I are looking looking at a steady state solution what would happen. So, in a steady state uh, what is going to happen. So, if I look at the minority carrier diffusion equation that we have developed in module 3 I have I basically need to solve in the n region for a equation um, since uh, d uh, delta p d t will be 0 this would reduce to the excess carrier concentration 
on the n side and I am going to uh, do some uh, um, change in the uh, reference uh, here. Instead of writing it in x, I am going to write it in x prime and basically what I am doing here is x prime is a new scale which is x minus x n. So, basically I am shifting the origin from 0 to x n and that just helps in writing the solution in a more uh, friendlier form. So, this would be the the new diffusion equation that we need to solve in order to figure out the current due to this divided by d p tau p. Now, um, we know what tau p is uh, if you recall tau p is the uh, minority carrier lifetime in n side this is minority carrier lifetime and d p is the minority carrier diffusion constant. And I had also given that a general expression for uh, for this type of uh, uh, differential equation is a general solution for this is given as delta p of n this we have also covered in the module 3. So, a uh, general expression solution would be of this type a 1 exponential x prime over l p plus a 2 exponential minus x prime over l p, where these are the constant that we need to evaluate for given boundary condition. So, uh, when we uh, and what what was L p? L p is nothing but a square root of d p tau p and this is also generally given a name uh, this is called minority carrier diffusion length. Diffusion length. So, basically what it is uh, saying is L p is a um, product of the diffusion constant and uh, lifetime of the minority carrier. So, it kind of gives you the average distance the minority carriers can move in a material uh, that is what uh, L p signify uh, in case of a diffusion problem. Uh, so, when I put in the boundary conditions which I have already defined uh, over here uh, basically I am going to get a solution for on the in the n region the solution is going to be delta p of n x prime this will be given by p and o exponential q v applied over k t minus 1 exponential minus x prime over l p. So, uh, although I had earlier uh, just uh, uh, drawn it uh, some uh, figure on how this concentration will change now I have a expression for it. Uh, which says that this is going to change in x prime as a exp as a uh, in ex in exponential form which means that i was correct in assuming in this form the dif the excess carrier concentration is going to exponentially decrease to this value this this what we have obtained so similarly um, without uh, doing it again i can uh, show that what is going to be the whole concentration. Uh, so, del n of p in again may be x double prime uh, where I would shift it uh, to minus x p I can show that this is going to be the n p o exponential q v a by k t minus 1 exponential minus x double prime over l n because now this will be the minority carrier diffusion length for electrons on the p type side. So, this is my uh, electron concentration I can plot that that is also reducing exponentially from this boundary condition going towards minus infinity. So, once we have uh, how the minority carrier concentration is changing in n and p region uh, now the problem is reduced to finding out what would be the total current. So, because of diffusion of these uh, uh, minority carriers which are injected on the opposite side. I can calculate the current, the current is going to be uh, let us say first calculate due to the holes 
the current uh, in the x prime uh, scale. Uh, remember x double prime here is going to be x plus x p. So, x prime is going to be uh, negative of the whole current is going to be negative of q diffusion constant the current density uh, density the concentration that I have just calculated and del x because this is the only thing that is existing there there is no field in the uh, in the end region. So, this would be the current uh, that I need to uh, figure out in the end region due to the whole a hole injection. Uh, taking delta p and x prime and then uh, taking the differentials this current then comes out to be q d of p over l of p and times sorry p at n o side exponential q v a over k t minus 1 exponential minus x prime over l p. So, this would be the current at any well at any uh, parameter x prime which has been uh, moved from x is equal to 0. This would be the current due to the holes in the n region. Similarly, the current uh, due to the electrons on the other side is going to can be written as q d of n l of n n p o. This term remains the same here uh, for electrons also and this will be x double prime over l n. So, uh, what we are talking about now here is that um, I, I, I have an expression which is also a exponentially changing current due to the injected hole. This is the expression for j p and then I have an expression for j n um, in terms of this uh, new scale of x prime and x double prime. So, this is how the current is changing in this region and I, uh, I, I am interested in finding out what is the total current j which is going to be j n plus j of p, because, uh, uh, because the electron current is going to add to the whole current. This will be given by j n plus j of p and uh, I uh, do have a negative sign here at minus x p when I calculate that. Um, so this is going to be uh, negative current when you uh, evaluate that uh, uh, current. So, the total current is going to be the current density due to electron and holes, because whatever uh, electrons are in uh, holes are injected in the n side, they are being injected from this side we are assuming there is no recombination in the depletion zone. So, no recombination here, which means all the electrons which were inject which are here, they came from this edge and they, were, they survived. There was no recombination of that. So, the current inside the depletion region is also j p. Same thing we are assuming for the electrons which are injected on the p side, we are saying that there is no depletion, the current remains constant in the in the depletion region. The total current is going to be j n plus j p. Evaluate j of p, uh, j of n at minus x p plus I can evaluate j of p at x n. So, this is in the this is minus of x p, this is at x n. So, that is the current that I want to evaluate. If I evaluate the current here, that is the total current, because inside the depletion zone it remains constant that is the total current that, that is flowing in the device uh, and that is what I need to evaluate. So, I will take my current expression and put in the values for uh, x prime and x double prime such that x is x n or minus x p. If I do that, I will get an expression for the total current density and the total current density expression is going to come out to be j is equal to uh, if I am going to add this and get put in the value is going to be q times d p over l of p p n 0 plus d n over l of n and p 0 exponential q 
V B A K T minus 1. So, this is my current density in a P n diode. Now, it is important to note that so far in all this uh, uh, derivation, we have not said whether V A is positive or negative. Basically, V A can be it can be both positive or negative. In the positive, it is going to be a forward bias case. If I take V A to be negative, it is going to be reverse bias case. So, basically then what I am saying is that I have a expression now, which is the current density voltage expression for my ideal p n junction. And this will give me my j v characteristics for the ideal p n junction. For forward bias, I will put the positive voltage for V A and for the reverse bias, I will put the negative voltage for V A. So, let us look at the behavior of this function. If I plot this function, this is a general equation. Uh, what I am going to get is, I am now going to plot it on j versus v. So, when v a is positive, in the forward bias, this is basically giving me an exponential dependence. The current increases exponentially. When v a is negative, in the reverse bias, then as soon as the v a is V A is uh, or Q of V A is approximately few K B T's or K T's. I will find that the expression here, this this one becomes uh, goes towards zero, which means that in reverse bias, my current density in reverse bias is nothing but negative of Q times d P over L p p of n o plus d of n over L of n n of p o. So, this is my current density uh, in the reverse bias and as you can see it does not depend on the voltage. So, in the reverse bias I am going towards constant current which is given by this uh, and this is also known as the reverse saturation current. This is called the reverse saturation current. So, this is the ideal I V characteristic of a P n diode. And, uh, it basically gives a behavior in which in the forward bias you have exponentially increasing current and in the reverse bias you have a very small current. Effectively it is saying it this is a device which can work as a rectifier. It will allow current to follow in a flow in one direction, but in the reverse bias it will not allow it to flow and hence many devices can be made uh, from this particular diode. Uh, before we uh, go on to some applications of device it is uh, uh, good to spend some time in understanding this behavior on what is happening inside the device. So, um, if this is a behavior, um, how do we see the overall current inside the device? So, we, uh, we had calculated it, we had calculated this behavior assuming diffusion current due to the minority carriers in the opposite, uh, opposite type of uh, uh, region in for the electrons in the p type and for the holes in the n type and we evaluated at the point where assuming that there was no recombination in the depletion zone. So, if I look at the current in, in the inside the device, my depletion zone, I am looking at the current inside the device x n minus x p. I know that I have calculated whatever is uh, the whole current and the electron current inside the depletion zone it is the same because there is no recombination, but I also told you that this current is exponentially decreasing outside which means this current is decreasing exponentially on this side and it is also decreasing exponentially on this side and almost going to 0 in this side. Now, this is uh, does not make sense because the current is something which must be current must remain constant. throughout the device. So, what is happening? So, 
So, in this region of course, it is constant this and this is still total constant, but here you have j p which is getting reduced in this direction and here this is the j n which is getting reduced. So, that means, in order to, to keep it constant the j n must increase the, the rate where, where it is going down the j n must also increase to compensate to have it all constant right. So, as, as much as it decreases the same amount of j n must increase. So, it must increase here. Now, where is this increase coming from? This increase is coming from and it will continue on in order to make sure that total j n plus j p will remain constant always. This is coming from because as electrons are diffusing out these uh, sorry holes, these extra holes which are diffusing out they are also getting recombined with the majority carriers, but majority carriers must then getting must be getting supplied from outside. So, there must be a j n due to recombination So, there is no recombination here, but here the excess carriers must be recombining with the electrons which are being supplied from the outer circuit and hence this reduction in the diffusion hole current is being made up by that electron current which is coming for the recombination of holes. Now, this is an important part because when we will use the p n diode as a LED this recombination is what is responsible for the emission of light. So, if the p n diode is made of a direct semiconductor the recombination in this region is leading to emission of light. Uh, similarly, when the electron current is getting reduced here which basically means that the whole current must be increasing to make up for the difference in this reduction such that j n plus j p must remain constant. So, inside the device j n plus j p should be constant at all points at all x. So, this is what hap is happening in the device no recombination here in an ideal device, but recombination must be taking place in the region where you have excess carriers and this recombination is what is the reason for having uh, emission in the uh, forward bias. Uh, so, in, in forward bias the carriers are being injected what is happening in the reverse bias in the reverse bias see the current that is uh, there in the reverse bias is about this much. So, in the reverse bias there is no injection of currents it is actually and it is in the negative direction. So, it is actually rather than pushing minority carriers the uh, electron uh, the holes in this direction it is pulling the minority carriers. So, the current is going in the opposite direction this current is in the opposite direction. So, in the forward bias the, the minority carriers are being injected into the NNP side in the reverse bias the minority carriers are being extracted out of the uh, NNP side and since there is a already a built in field those extracted carriers then uh, drift and give you a uh, overall reverse saturation current. So, this is a situation of an ideal p n diode uh, it where you are using injection of carriers in the forward bias and the thermionic uh, collection of carriers in the reverse bias uh, giving you the I v characteristic of an ideal p n junction. Um, now, uh, before we uh, uh, close the discussion on ideal characteristic of p n junction uh, it is also very important to realize another phenomena which happens in ideal p n uh, junctions and that is about reverse break breakdown. So, we have seen that uh, the ideal behavior should be something like this, but then sometimes when one goes to very uh, large values of uh, reverse field one finds a breakdown of the device which is shown like that maybe certain slope here very large increase in the reverse current at a certain value value of the uh, voltage which is known as a breakdown voltage. So, basically what is happening is that uh, the ideal p n junction is deviating at this voltage from its ideal behavior and uh, uh, it can happen for various reasons. Um, uh, this breakdown can happen uh, due to two reasons basically the first one is known as the Zener effect. The 
second one is known as the avalanche effect. It is important to note that uh, this breakdown necessarily may not be bad. Uh, it is not. Uh, it, it is not the breaking down of the device in the sense that it has. Uh, uh, it will uh, be permanently damaged. People have used this breakdown region, uh, effectively uh, controlled it, in order to use a, to, to even use it as a device. And uh, so one can have a breakdown, then go back to the uh, lower voltages and then come back again. So, this can be reproduced, this uh, breakdown can be reproduced and it does not necessarily mean the damage. The damage can occur, because the currents may become too large. The J breakdown may become too large and because of that large current and uh, um, the heat generation due to that you may, uh, the device may get uh, damaged. Uh, but otherwise, this, this particular breakdown that we talk about in p n junction can be used. Uh, uh, even constructively for making a different kind of device or something called Zener diode that one can make. Uh, this burning of the device can also happen in the forward direction if the current becomes too large. If the current become too large, one can also have damage of the device. So, one has to uh, limit uh, the, the operating uh, currents of the device uh, keeping in mind how much uh, heat can be dissipated by the device and that is why thermal management of devices are very important. Uh, so, let us talk about uh, what are these uh, two different kind of breakdowns are. The first one Zener effect, this occurs normally at low voltage and uh, something like uh, few volts, this will occur at few volts and this will occur at high voltage, uh, even some few volts to about maybe thousands of volts. The Zener effect uh, is occurring normally when you have highly doped, highly doped p n junctions. Now, what happens in the highly doped p n junctions that your p and n side is uh, very close to the conduction band, which means in equilibrium a highly doped p n junction in equilibrium will show that it is something like this. Because uh, it is uh, on, on this side uh, n side it is very very close to the conduction band and on the p side it is very very close to the uh, valence band of the of the material. So, this is a highly doped p n junction. Now, if it is in even a small amount of uh, reverse bias, so even few volts of reverse bias, what happens is that the, uh, the barrier will increase And effectively, what one finds is that the electrons here, the electrons that are here are finding empty states over here. So, the barrier has increased and this is the depletion width, call it w earlier, depletion width. So, the empty states here for electrons to come, the same way there are holes here and then there are uh, one would find that there are empty states, there would be empty states for holes uh, on this side. So, this is not drawn really to the scale, um, it is going it has to be since it is highly doped it has to be a very sharp picture. Uh, let me just redraw draw this at this point. So, it should be a picture where the whole of uh, like this.
So, the electrons are going to be able to inject into directly they can inject into directly into the empty states available here and similarly holes can inject into the empty the holes can find empty states over here. So, this effect if, if this thickness if the, the width repletion width becomes a small with the reverse bias and it is highly doped then this thickness is small enough to initiate a phenomena called tunneling of carriers. And because of that one finds uh, uh, there will be current because of tunneling of carriers directly into the other side and that is the uh, overall Zener effect. Uh, on the other hand the avalanche effect is something which happens at very large voltages avalanche breakdown and this is taking place due to a process that we discussed in the module 3 that is known as impact ionization. Which means that you can create uh, in, in generation of electron hole pairs if I am coming with a very high energy electrons it can it is scat getting scattered uh, from lattice or from impurities and its energy is high enough that it can ionize the lattice and create an electron hole pair and that was discussed earlier in module 3 and avalanche breakdown is a uh, uh, is a uh, uh, effect of that kind of breakdown. So, in this particular case what we find is uh, because of the impact ionization of the of the holes. So, if I again look at the region that I have been plotting so far if I am looking at the depletion region this is minus of uh, x p and x n then I know that uh, um, electrons electrons are uh, getting uh, in the reverse bias electrons are going in this direction this is in the reverse bias v r. Now, this electron which is going through here can have a scattering event to create a electron and hole pair because the energy is high enough it is it occurs at a very high voltage its energy is high enough it creates electron and hole pairs and gives some energy to that uh, loses some energy, but still its energy is high enough. So, that it continues on and you collect two electrons here and the hole which is generated here will go back. So, this is one ionization impact event because of a highly energetic electrons in the depletion region in the reverse bias you created a electron hole pair which is due to impact ionization and now instead of one electron you have two electron. Now, this may not seem so uh, drastic, but what happens is that if uh, you are having high enough voltage then the electron created in one impact ionization phenomena can again ionize the lattice. So, one can think of it uh, in actual situation you can have a uh, p n junction depletion region uh, electron which is uh, uh, crossing the depletion region creates one electron hole pair here two electrons move in this direction one holes moves in this direction this electron again creates uh, another electron hole pair. So, now you have 1, 2, 3 going in this direction and a hole going back. This hole can get enough energy to create another electron and hole and there will be two holes going in this direction and another electron growing here. So, you can see how this avalanche why we call it avalanche effects charting from a single electron. Now, the number of electrons which are giving rise to the current is 1, 2, 3, 4 this is just uh, showing it in, uh, in a cartoon form and the number of holes which are generated adding to the current is 1, 2, 3. So, that is why even a single electron if impact if the energies can become high enough in the repletion region for the carriers it can start a avalanche effect and because of this one has the avalanche breakdown. So, this uh, then completes our understanding of a uh, uh, ideal p n junction and um, what uh, to summarize so far what we have understood about uh, p n junction um, we started 
with a qualitative picture of how p n junctions operate. Then we uh, quantified the thermal equilibrium status of what is the charge balance and the fields in the thermal equilibrium. of p n junction. Then finally, we looked at how to derive a um, I v characteristic of a ideal p n junction. And uh, the important point there to remember is in the forward bias what the, the total current, the total current is due to the diffusion of minority carriers, diffusion of injected minority carriers. And uh, we also uh, looked at how the total current should remain, J should be constant throughout the device and this requires uh, axis carrier recombination and this is how one makes LEDs in a direct band gap semiconductor. We also looked at in the ideal characteristics the breakdown of a p n junction. And uh, the fact that uh, one can have a controlled breakdown of p n junction and that particular can thing can also be used as a device. Uh, in the next lecture, we will uh, uh, show that uh, how one can fabricate p n junction and that is the real power of semiconductor technology uh, in uh, today's world.